Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I am doing my March-April book haul. So these are going to be all of the books that I got in March and April. Um, and I ended up with a lot more books than I was planning to get. Uh, so this is a pretty big book haul, but I am hoping and planning that May and June I'm going to buy a lot fewer books. Uh, so I'll probably do a book haul for May, June, but like it'll probably be a lot smaller. Hopefully that actually happens. But I'm still very excited about all of these books, so let's get started. So first I'm going to start with the two books that I picked up at the Novateen Book Festival. This is the second year that I've gone to Novateen, and it's always really fun. Um, I went with my friend of mine and I got both of these books on her recommendation. So the first one is actually a graphic novel, which is Bloom by Kevin Panetta. This, as I said, is a graphic novel, and I don't usually read graphic novels. I just don't find it a medium that's easy for me to really get into the story. Um, but my friend recommended this one and said that it would be a good one to read um, if you are not somebody who usually likes graphic novels because it is very uh, easy to read and I have already read this this will be in my April wrap-up and I agree like it was very easy to read I really did enjoy it um, it's very cute it is a story about two boys who work in a bakery and fall in love and it is adorable and the other book that I picked up was Black Wings Beating by Alex London. This is a YA fantasy set in a world where falconers are like the highest, um, the highest esteem is to be a falconer. And we follow two characters who I think at least one of them is a falconer if not both of them, they're twins, um, and they have to embark on a quest. I don't exactly know the details of it, but I saw Alex London on a uh, panel and I just really enjoyed him. I thought he was really funny and he just seemed really fun, so it made me more excited about his book. And then my friend Musetta had actually read this book as well and really enjoyed it and recommended it to me, so I thought I would pick this one up. Then some other miscellaneous books I've gotten over the past few months. I picked up The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chakshi, and this is one that I feel like everybody knows what it's about. It is set in France in the 1800s, um, and I think there are like secret societies, there's a heist, I think they're stealing back some ancient artwork or something like that, there's a band of misfits, you know, who all come together for the heist. And this is one that I actually wasn't quite sure if I was going to read it. Something about the setting just didn't quite appear appeal to me, but uh, my dad read this one. He read, heard about it somewhere. I don't even know where because I don't. I wasn't the one that told him about it and usually I'm the one that recommends books to him. Um, but he heard about this one and he thought it sounded really interesting because he really enjoys like the Da Vinci Code and ones that have like puzzle solving and secret societies and that kind of thing. Um, so this sounded interesting to him. So he read this and then when he was done with it he gave it to me. So that's how I came by this book. But I am actually more intrigued by it now because I did hear that one of the main characters in this um, is Jewish. So I'm very interested to see um, how that goes. Then I also pre-ordered The Fever King by Victoria Lee and this is one also that I wasn't quite sure if I was going to read it or not but then I decided that I would try it out. It is a dystopian science fiction. I've heard that it deals a lot with topics about like immigration and refugees and things like that but of course in like a sci-fi futuristic setting um, and I also believe that one of the main characters might be Jewish. I'm pretty sure that the author is Jewish um, so that also piqued my interest in it. The next book that I have is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. It sounds like a very dark fantasy which I am very intrigued by. There's been a lot of hype about it and then some mixed reviews after it came out but I'm still very intrigued um, and I am never quite sure what this is about but in the flap it says a girl named Nadia who hears the whisper of the gods inside her head, a prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins, and a monster hidden beyond, behind pale tortured eyes and a smile that cuts like a knife. So I think that sounds very interesting. And another book that has been getting a lot of hype recently is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. And this one, I also am not 100% sure what it's about. I think it takes place in a small town. I know there are like four founding families of the small town. Um, and there is, I think we're following a girl who her family just recently moved back to this small town and she finds out that her family is one of the founding families um, and kind of befriends other other kids from the other founding families and then they have to save the town from some dark 
force that is in the woods or something like that. But I have heard this compared many times to the Raven Cycle, which really is all I need to know. Um, so I'm very excited about this. Um, I've heard that it's kind of like a mix of the Raven Cycle and Stranger Things, which I actually haven't watched Stranger Things, but I feel like I, if I watched it, I would like it. I'm planning to watch it eventually. Um, but yeah, so I'm very intrigued by this. I also have heard Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads like raving about this book and saying it's so amazing. Um, and so that also makes me more excited about this one. Then I also picked up Storm of Locust by Rebecca Roanhorse, and this is the sequel to Trail of Lightning. This is a post-apocalyptic Navajo-inspired uh, like urban fantasy, I think. I think I covered all the bases of the things that it follows. Our main character is Maggie, I think is her name. It's been a while since I read this. Yeah, Maggie, um, who uh, is a monster hunter and also has some like special powers powers of her own and I read the first one last year and I really enjoyed it so I wanted to get the second one and all I really know about this one is I think there is like a dangerous cult that they have to investigate and maybe take down. Also on the cover of this I'm very intrigued I don't know if you can see it but right here there is a girl who looks like she's wearing like a prom dress but also has a machine gun on her shoulder so I'm very intrigued as to what's going on in that situation. Then I also picked up Burn Bright by Patricia Briggs. This is, I think, the fifth or sixth book in the Alpha and Omega series, which is a spin-off from her Mercy Thompson series. Um, so this is an urban fantasy, and I have been waiting for this one to come out in mass market paperback so that it would go with the rest of my series, and also because it's a super long series, so I like to buy them in the mass markets because uh, it's less expensive. And this is a series that I'm kind of going back and forth about whether I'm going to continue it. Um, I, I really loved them in the past, but I feel like as more and more books come out in the Mercy Thompson series and in the Alpha and Omega series, my excitement for it is kind of waning. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to continue with these, unless this one's like amazing and just like saves the whole series for me. Who knows? Then I also picked up The Queen of the Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. And this is one that I've seen a couple people talk about, but I haven't heard a lot about it. And I think I've heard pretty like, good but not great reviews for it. Uh, but I've been very intrigued and again I saw a mass market paperback so I wanted to pick it up. I love mass market paperbacks so I was very excited about this and what I'm also very excited about is on the back the first like couple lines it says everything has a spirit, the willow tree with leaves that kiss the pond, the stream that feeds the river, the wind that exhales fresh snow and just like I love that everything has a spirit, like the trees and the water and everything, like that's very, like I'm very into this like nature having a spirit. Apparently though the spirits of this world do not really like humans and are trying to destroy them um, and the person protecting them is there is a magical queen who protects the humans from these spirits. Um, and so I am hoping for some real like nature vibes from this. The next two books are ones that I bought a lot because of the covers but also I'm also expecting some good like nature vibes from them and I haven't heard anything about either of these so I'm very interested to see how this goes. The first is Between the Water and the Woods and like I don't know if you can see this how beautiful is this artwork I love this cover art and there's something about the style that reminds me of a movie that I used to watch when I was little there was like a Thumbelina a movie that I used to watch that for some reason the artwork looks a lot like that. Um, so I was very like drawn to this. Anyway, so this is another YA fantasy that is set in a small village. And in this village, there are three rules. You don't look into the shadows, you don't cross the river, and you don't go into the forest. But the main character, one day her younger brother, uh, breaks all of those rules and she has to go and save him and it awakens some dark creatures that have been sleeping um, and then they have to go and warn the king that these creatures have been awoken and that's all I know about it but I feel like this is going to have some nature vibes too, so I'm excited. The next book that I have is one of the ones I am like most excited for, and I haven't heard anything about this. Like I've literally never heard of this book before, but 
I'm so excited for it. So it is called The Beast Player by Nahoko Uehashi. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I looked up, I tried to look up how to pronounce it. Um, but this is another YA fantasy, but it is one that is supposed to be very nature-based. Um, it is actually, it was actually originally written in Japanese and it was translated into English, I think. Um, I think this came, the English edition came out in June. And apparently it has been very popular in Japan, but now it is in the US and it is in English so I can read it. Um, and I am very excited about this. I, again, love this cover art. It is so beautiful. And can you see that this is a little, like, animal with ears like I don't always know I didn't always notice that like the first time that I looked at it but the main character that we follow her family has a kind of magic that allows them to speak to magical creatures which I'm super excited about that um and but that magical ability is what gets her wrapped up in a lot of dangerous plots so I am really excited about this one um, after I bought it, I looked up more about it, and a lot of what I've heard from it is that the writing is beautiful, that the, dis the, the depiction of nature is incredible, um, and that people really love it. So I am so excited. This is one that I really want to get to very soon, maybe in May, because like this is really calling out to me. Then I have a couple of nonfiction books. The first one I have actually already uh, talked about in my March wrap up, so I'll link that below, which is Dare to Lead, Brave Work, Tough Conversations, and Whole Hearts by Brene Brown. I've been talking about Brene Brown for the last couple of months. Um, I've been reading through a bunch of her books recently and really enjoying them. She does research about shame and vulnerability, connection, resilience, all of that kind of stuff and it's just been really interesting and this was actually my favorite one um, that I've read by her so far. So this takes a lot of the same information from her previous books and then talks more specifically about how you apply that to the world of work. Um, but somehow even though this one was focused on like how to apply it at work, this is the one that I the um, things that she was talking about, I found most applicable to all areas of life. So, and the other nonfiction book that I have is The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Walhaben. And this is one that I'm so excited for also. Like, doesn't this just seem like the perfect kind of nonfiction book for me? It's all about trees. It says what they feel and how they communicate. So it's all about like trees and essentially like the communities that they create and the ways that they communicate with each other and it just sounds so interesting. And then I have some books of poetry which are both by the same poet. So the first one is All the Words Are Yours, Haiku on Love by Tyler Knott Gregson. Um, so Tyler Knott Gregson is a poet that I found last year and I read his first book which was Chasers of the Light then I just recently read Wildly Into the Dark in April so that will be in my uh, April wrap-up and I really loved that I have been really enjoying his poetry more and more so I decided to pick up more of his stuff so I got this one which is all of his haikus. Haikus are not my favorite form of poetry but I thought it might be interesting to uh, just read these ones as well because I just really enjoy uh, the way that he writes and the topics that he writes on. And then I also picked up Miracle in the Mundane also by Tyler Knott Gregson and so this book I am not exactly sure how to explain what it is. Well it says poems, prompts, and inspiration to unlock your creativity and unfiltered joy. So that sounds great. So this book has a mixture of poetry and like prompts and challenges and things to do to kind of live a fuller life. Um, and so I think that will be really interesting. I'm not planning to go through it really meticulously, but I think that it might, um, you know, provide some really interesting food for thought. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, going through this one. Okay, so we're in the last section of books now, which are books that I picked up at a used bookstore. So I did go to a used bookstore in March. I think it was, was it in March? I don't remember now. Uh, but what always happens at used bookstores is that I end up getting a lot of books because they're so inexpensive, uh, but they had really good stuff this time. So the first ones that I have, everybody's going to know, which are An Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night, both by Saba Tahir. 
I've heard so much about these books, people just raving about them, loving these books. Um, so it's the first two in the series. Is it a trilogy or are there going to be more in it? I know that after the second book they did a cover redesign so the third book won't match these. Um, so if I really love this series and I want to continue to the third book we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but for right now I found the first two books in really great condition. Then I also picked up The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a classic science fiction um, that I found when I was doing some research about classic sci-fi for that science fiction through the decades challenge that I was doing last year um, and I didn't add this one to that list but I decided I did want to read it eventually and I believe this takes place on another planet where there is an alien race that can uh, choose their gender and they can change their gender. So this was a really important book in like the history of science fiction and it was talking about things that a lot of other books weren't addressing. I have heard that it does have kind of an old-fashioned uh, view of gender, that it does really stick to the gender binary, um, but it still is, for its time, it was a really groundbreaking exploration of gender. And I also picked up Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovic. And this is one that every time I see it, I always go, oh, maybe I'll read that sometime. And then I never do. But I saw it at a used bookstore. It was very inexpensive, a really nice addition. Like it seems like brand new practically. Um, so I decided to pick it up. It follows a family, um, especially a family of women who have a special power that they call a gleam. And so yeah, everybody, their gleam is a little bit different, but it is a, some kind of magical power. Uh, but they cannot tell anyone their magical power, and to protect them, the mother of the family forbids anybody to fall in love. Um, and I believe the family is also cursed in some way, but I'm unclear what the curse is. But the premise sounds a little bit similar to uh, Wild Beauty and so I'm kind of intrigued to see how that one goes. And then I have another book which also kind of reminds me of a slightly similar premise which is Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. And this one always comes up when I search for magical realism books but I think this might actually be fabulism not magical realism. Um, but it does sound really interesting and also like garden spells. I feel like that just sounds like a great book for me and like this cover is beautiful also probably going to have some good nature vibes, so I'm excited. Um, and this one also follows a family of women. There is a mother and I think a few sisters and cousins that all live together and they also have um, a magical powers to grow plants. But they grow, I guess, like fruits and vegetables and the mother, I believe, is a caterer and she incorporates their magical uh, vegetables into the food that she makes. And one day, one of the sisters who I think has like previously left comes back and has a daughter of her own and that kind of turns their worlds upside down. Then I have a couple of books that are books about books. So this is a new like niche genre that I uh, am really interested to read more in since I read The Binding in February and I really loved it and that is like a book about books. So it is a historical fiction so it's a fiction book with like just a hint of magic that has books as a strong theme throughout the book and I loved it and I really want to read more books about books so I got a couple of them. The first one that I have is Inkheart by Cornelia Funk and this one I just recently found out that this I think was originally written in German and was translated to English. I did not know that. Uh, but this is one that I think was very popular when I was like in middle school but I never got around to reading it. But it is a book about books so it follows Meggie and her father Mo and Mo has a magical ability to read characters out of books. So when he reads out loud characters will come out of the books. But at some point in his past Mo read a villain or a bunch of villains out of a book and they have been running rampant um, around the world but now they have come back to find him. He has actually been in hiding for most of Meggie's life and this is one that I have actually already read at this point. I read it in April so this will be in my April wrap-up. 
Another one that I have picked up that is a book about books is People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. And this one follows a rare book expert who has a Hebrew manuscript um, that she is translating. And as she's translating it, she finds bits and pieces of information about this manuscript's past and all of the hands that it has passed through, all of the people who have protected it. And so this is a historical fiction that I think follows a lot of different timelines as we learn about all of these different pieces of history um, that this manuscript has passed through and the different things that have happened to it. And the last one that I have here is not one that I got from the used bookstore. I actually ordered this one, but it is also a book about books. So that is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruz Zafon. And this one follows a boy whose family, I think, has a library or collects books um, and one day among all of these books that they have he finds one book that I think is called The Shadow of the Wind and he reads it and loves it and so he tries to find more books by the same author but while he is trying to find a book by that author he realizes that he can't find any and that somebody is systematically finding and destroying all of the books by this author and so he kind of goes on a quest to figure out why that's happening and that reveals even more mysteries. Um, so I'm really interested in this one. I think also this one was originally written in Spanish and this is translated into English. Okay so that is all of the books that I bought in March and April. It's a lot of books but I'm really excited about all of these especially there are a few that I'm just like so so excited for. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!